What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Pete's Carport episode, and welcome to another Harbor Freight Tool Review. So, if you guys didn't know, right now we're working on a few different projects. One that includes the Mercedes 190E. It's the Eurospec car, the one that we've been kind of finagling around on wheel spacers and upgrading the big brake kit on there. And so, with that big brake kit, we're going to need to bleed the whole system, um, technically flush it, uh, and go with a full fill on fluid. So in order to do that, you really have two choices. You have to get a second person who goes in the car and presses down the brake while you open up the brake line and you basically flush out all the fluid while adding new fluid in. Uh, and then the second choice is to use a um, machine like this. Now, this is the uh, manual version. They do sell a version I've even watched a video on. Uh, where it hooks up to an air compressor, but I wanted to keep this simple. I do have access to an air compressor, but why would I want to try it out the the, hard, the easier way when I can chest out this uh, little less expensive, little more user-friendly device for you guys? And uh, what better way to do it than when we've already got a project going on where we uh, have the necessity for it? So let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to show you guys which one this one is. This is made by Pittsburgh, which is basically Harbor Freight's brand. And it's the uh, vacuum pump, pump kit. It says it's 14 pieces. I'm guessing they're uh, counting every little part that gets screwed into this device because I'm not seeing a whole lot to this. Uh, but let's go ahead and cut it open. Make sure you don't cut any of the hose lines that come with it when doing this. Now, this should be pretty straightforward. Uh, you're gonna uh, here's the pieces that they refer to so you're gonna get this uh, little filler thing here now I've, I'm just opening this and have not used it So what I'm gonna do is basically just show you guys everything that comes with it in case you purchased it And you might be missing something so you've got pieces in here um, And you got this little cap thing here uh, And then this looks like the pump and there's one more uh, Hose line there's two of them here that are connected and that's probably what's gonna go uh, from this bottle and back to the pump. So let me go ahead. I'm going to flip open the instructions I'll get this all set up and I'll show you guys how to use it Okay, so the instructions are located uh, in between uh, This piece here that kind of sits inside the plastic and there's a lot of um, first section to this that's basically breaking down your um, your, your your system testing and uh, you're basically your safety information. This is all safety information. So a lot of stuff that you might want to skim through But this page here is going to have the actual setup and the first thing it says I mean, it's pretty pretty basic, but if you read through here uh, It says to attach the three inch hose to the bottom of the cup So our three inch hose is going to be one of these ones here And what they mean by that is you take your lid here That's going to go on the cup and you attach it right there. The next thing it says is make sure your O-ring is seated inside there so that when you put this lid on, uh, it's gonna seal and you're not gonna have any air gaps. The next thing is gonna be attach your 23 inch hose, which th that's the two longer ones that came attached together. And it says to attach one of those to this end here. And we'll get that on there. And attach the other one to our pump here. Just like that. Okay. Now, the next step is going to be to um, basically set it up now for your car. So you've got a lot of adapters in here. And what you're going to do is attach your other 23 inch, or sorry, um, yeah, 23 inch hose to the other end here. And then this comes with um, a lot of different adapters uh, depending on the size of your brake caliper. So what you're going to do is, uh, let's say it's this one here, which we're going to go out to the car and test. You're going to attach that into there and that's gonna to go to our brake caliper. So let's go out to the car and figure out which one we need because I know our front calipers and our rear calipers have a different size uh, nozzle on them. So we wanna make sure that we use the correct one for each one. On this video, we're only gonna be bleeding from the back because you're gonna to wanna to start for most vehicles. Now read your owner's, owner's manual. You're gonna start with the back passenger 
and that is the furthest away from the master cylinder. That way you're bleeding out all of the air in the system, which is what we're trying to do also now that we've resealed off our system with the new calipers. So let's go out to the car and get this set up and we're gonna go ahead and make sure everything works and test it out. Okay, for this next step, you're gonna basically wanna mock up the nozzle end onto your caliper. Now let me show you real quick because the instructions uh, seemed a little confusing, but I think what they're trying to say is that you might use uh, one of these ends or you might use one of these ends depending on your brake setup or what you're bleeding. Because my guess is you could use this uh, to bleed other things. But from what I've been looking at, you're gonna have to use this on any caliper that I've seen. Now, of course, like I said, there might be a, another type of caliper out there, older style or something else that you could use this for. But if you look here, this is basically your caliper bleeder. And what you're gonna do is, you, the, the goal here is to make sure this is a tight fit. And you can see this one here uh, does not fit on. I'm gonna grab this smaller one here. And this one here is gonna pop on really nicely. Now, uh, what we're gonna do then is attach uh, this hose end here, not the one that goes to our pump device, but basically with your container in between the very end hose that we just set up, that is going to attach right to this. And if you've got um, your wrench, you wanna make sure that you got your wrench on there, uh, or you can at least fit it in there before sticking this on. That way you can open and close. So what we're gonna do here is basically attach this, open up our system, and then we're going to hand pump. As you can see, I've got my finger on the end here. So it's gonna create pressure, and now we can um, have some suction. So what we're gonna do is create pressure and then open up our valve so that way it sucks out, and then we're gonna close our valve uh, and that way we're pulling out any of the air that's in the system, just like if you were to push and hold the brake. So let's go ahead and get set up and I'll show you guys how that works. Okay guys, so once you have this all set up, um, you're gonna wanna make sure you have the right size wrench. Now typically you're gonna use a uh, pipe wrench like this. Mine is nine millimeters. I don't have a nine millimeter um, brake line wrench, but um, I can just use a standard nine millimeter. I've already tested it out and you can see here, I've got a little bit of fluid in here and I just wanted to make sure everything was functioning. And the main reason why is because the instructions say that you want to hand pump this about 15, uh, 10 to 15 times and get it to the, uh, the 10 HG. Now, no matter how many times I pumped it and I think that it's just a poor system, this is not the highest quality machine, I can't get it above about nine. And so basically, I'll show you how that works. It does maintain and hold that pressure. So I know there's no leaks, but once we open up this, we just went ahead and checked our brake line reservoir in the car just to make sure we had brake fluid in there, and we do. And you'll see all the bubbles, and that's exactly what you want. So you basically want this to relieve all those bubbles, just like if you were pressing it, tightening it, pressing it, tightening it. Now, the cool thing is, this is maintaining pretty high pressure and you can see it going down now as it pulls. And so I'm gonna pump it a little bit just so we can keep that pressure going until our bubbles start to go away. As you can see there, still lots of bubbles coming through the line. And this is exactly why we're doing this is so we can get rid of um, first off, old brake fluid that might have been in the system even though we did um, get rid of all of our brake fluid. And uh, one thing you can do too prior to this is to uh, get rid of everything in your reservoir if you're trying to do a flush where you're getting rid of old brake fluid and then start this process and add new fluid as it goes down. Okay, as this starts to go down, we're looking at a lot less bubbles. Now we're still getting quite a few bubbles through there, but I do wanna make sure we're not running dry on our brake uh, caliper reservoir. So, but let's go check our reservoir. Um, I wanna make sure you guys understand uh, where your brake fluid reservoir is. Now it can be different on many cars, but typically it's gonna be located up in this area where your brake boosters are typically located. And this is ours here. And we can see we're getting uh, pretty dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and add more brake fluid so we can pull all these air bubbles out. I'm gonna show you guys how it's gonna look once it clears all those bubbles and you start getting actual fluid. 
So this is when the actual main problem started happening. So I hooked up the pump to the front brakes that I had just recently changed. And as you can see here, no matter how much I pump it, I'm not able to create any pressure that sustains. So basically I couldn't get any fluid to come out of these brake lines, which got frustrating. I tried this for about 10 minutes before I decided to go back to the old method of grabbing the next door neighbor and having him pump the brakes as I opened up the valve and he pumped the brakes down. Shortly after doing that, I was able to get fluid to come out, so obviously this was the issue. The pump was just not strong enough, and I don't know if I had a defective device or if this entire thing just doesn't work properly unless you're bleeding out brakes that already have fluid in them. So this is my advice not to purchase this item, and I'm going to basically tell you now exactly how I feel. Well guys, we tried. Um, I'm usually pretty good with Harbor Freight tools. I usually uh, actually enjoy them, even though some of them will get bad reviews. This one had some mixed reviews on it, like all Harbor Freight tools. But from my experience just now, this thing is a piece of crap. It's going to go in the garbage. I'm um, basically uh, just drained out all the brake fluid that was in the reservoir. And I'm just going to toss this thing in the garbage and call it a day. I would normally, uh, you know, exchange or return something to Harbor Freight, but this is just full of brake fluid still in the lines. I'm not going to be able to get all that out. I'm not going to bring this in the store. So our main thing was we just could not get this to pull enough pressure. And when we got to the front brake calipers, which are brand new lines and brand new calipers, we weren't getting any fluid. So I went next door, got uh, my neighbor to come over. We pumped the brakes and immediately got fluid to flow through. So basically, this was just not powerful enough. And like I said, this could have been a bad one. You get one out of every 10 on these cheap tools that work perfect. And the other ones sometimes work here and there. And then you usually get uh, quite a few that are bad out of the box. That's the risk you take with getting something from Harbor Freight, especially their Pittsburgh style, which is their cheapest line. So I'm just gonna toss this thing in the garbage, call it a day. I don't know uh, if that gives you guys the exact answer you wanted, but at the end of the day, I went back to the old school style of pumping the brakes with two people and getting these brakes bled and tossing out a tool that I spent a little bit of money and time on. And so I hope this helps you guys out, hopes eliminates the headache of going down and trying to do this on your own. Now they do make one that hooks up to an air compressor and I think that one's the better option. But I did want to try this one since I didn't want to have to pull the air compressor out and use that. You guys have an awesome day. My name's Pete. This is Pete's Carport. Stay tuned. And if you guys like this video and you've uh, checked out some of the other ones, please subscribe and uh, you know support the channel. That helps me out the most. I do make money off of you just watching these videos, commenting, liking, and subscribing helps me build that. So have an awesome day, guys. Once again, my name's Pete.